everyone. Today I'm gonna do Litcode Medium question 907, sum of subarray minimum minimums. I think this is the most interesting question so far for uh, using mon monotonic stack. Uh, this question is asking you uh, if you are given an array of integers which is doesn't have a pattern uh, for all the possible subarrays which has to be continuous. Uh, what is the sum of all the minimum values in each of these subarrays? Uh, if you are following the logic of this question, it would be a very, very hard question because intuitively you would want to get all the possible subarrays from this given array, which would be n squared because you need to iterate all the beginning index and all the ending index. So that would be n squared. And for each subarray, you need to further get the minimum value, which would be, uh, because it's not sorted, would be another n. It's not even log n. So if you just brute force trying to solve this question, it will be n uh, to the power of three, which of course will exceed the, uh, exceed the time limit. So what you want to do is you do not follow the logic of this question suggesting which is get all the sub arrays, then get the minimum value. What you want to do is do the opposite. You want to assume each integer in this array is the minimum minimum value. Then you find all the subarrays this minimum value could be in. So the worst situation is this minimum, uh, this uh, given integer is the largest value, like to the left, to the right, around its neighbors. And then that would be just the, this integer itself. So for example, let me add a 10. So what you want to do is you want to actually let me draw it. So what you want to do is to maintain a monotonic uh, increasing stack. This stack will help you to find all the possible subarrays given an integer in this uh, entire array. So let's go back a little bit. So in so when you point to each so when you are iterating through this array for each given integer let's start from the first one you want to find its left boundary for the first one is just itself then the left left boundary which is defined that the first number that is smaller than the current number because if it's smaller than the current number can't be the minimum anymore so that wouldn't be a valid subarray then you move to the next then you want to find the left boundary which would be can include the three because one three is larger than one then you can move move until here because one is uh, smaller than all of these numbers so for one the boundary would be three and four and for for the next one for ten uh, it can't move at all because it's the very first left neighbor is smaller than ten the very first right neighbor is smaller than ten so the only subarray it can be is ten itself so so monotonically increasing stack will help you to track the left boundary, which is inside the stack. And for the right boundary, and for the right boundary will be checked when a new number is scanned. So for example, the new number is here, then we will start popping out all the numbers in the stack that is smaller than the current one, which in this case is all of them. You can start getting all the sub arrays when you are popping uh, the values in the stack. So when you are, for example, when you are popping this one, this is the left boundary. And the current new one is the right boundary because we know they are strictly smaller than this one. And those empty part, they are bigger than this one. So all this distance is a maximum subarray given this uh, value that's being popped out. And the question is asking you the sum of all the possible subarrays. So you have to get all the combinations that include this given array, which would be a combination 
sum of all the possible subarrays given this current number will be the combination number between d1 and d2. And d1 is the distance. d1 is the distance uh, between these two. d2 is the distance between these two. So let me code it. Since we are using a stack, of course, we need uh, to initialize a list. Then we initialize the result. Uh, then this is, uh, I'll show you the wrong way first to, so you can see where the error come from, uh, which is the only tricky part of this solution. So this is the part that I showed before. If the current one, if the current new bar is smaller the previous one in the stack, then we'll keep popping. And the one being popped out is the one that being considered as a minimum. And we are trying to find all the sub arrays for this one. And this is uh, I just to make it more clear. And the result would be, uh, we want to get the value of this index instead of the index itself. So that would be, and uh, using that, uh, uh, using the calculation for combination is all the distance from the left, which is the current i minus the very last one in the stack because we know it's strictly smaller than it the very first one is smaller than it then the the left the distance on the right side which is the current i minus after popping out all the values in the stack that's larger than the current, uh, that this new value, then we can safely append this new value to the stack. Because now it is, it becomes the largest one in the stack and we can maintain this monotonically increasing uh, requirement. And the question is asking you to modular the result uh, by 10 to the power of nine. So this is the main logic, uh, but if you do this directly, I'll show you, it will give you an error. And the reason is, uh, oh, not this error, I forgot this one. Uh, initially the uh, stack is empty, so you have to check. So this is an error I'm trying to show you. So this list index out of range is not from this one, it's from this stack. This is because you keep popping out while it's already empty. So what you want to do is you want to append both beginning and the end to guarantee it has something left there in the beginning because no one can be smaller than zero. So there will be one never be popped out. So that's the reason you add one zero in the beginning and you also want to add another zero in the end because at the end you want every value to be popped out like the example i gave you before so one here it if you don't have zero at the end this one will never be popped out because no other value is smaller than zero than one so that's why you need to add a zero to guarantee every value is popped out and to be counted. So that's the solution for this question.